All right, so we're gonna loosely continue with what we have uh, had before, and uh, you know I'm feeling pretty confident we're uh, successfully casting our uh, some player as the player, and I don't think we need to see this uh, else statement or that print statement anymore. And uh, back over here in the uh, scene file, what I'm gonna do is let me just fold this down for a second. I'm just gonna uh, leave our little guy right kind of front and center right here. Uh, previously, when we left off, he was over here, but uh, you know for a little what's maybe shaping up to be a top-down game example. Uh, let's just go ahead and initially from the start, turn off dynamic and uh, affected by gravity. Okay, so we'll, um, and allows rotation as well, uh, which in some sense now defeats a little bit of the purpose of having a uh, a physics definition for a while, but we'll, we'll work our way back to it. Uh, so then head back over here to your game scene file, and you can see that pretty much everything else is cleaned out as well. So uh, the update statement, I no longer need to really track the, the Y position file falling down uh, but what we what we will do and again I, I, I wiped out the changing of the anchor point as well is uh, we'll, we'll we'll detect uh, the touchdown location and then have our player uh, react to that and move forward and actually even uh, walk a little bit so uh, you can see that uh, you know with the uh, the initial uh, uh, sprite kit template they left in here or we left in here that the touches began touches moved in and all that stuff like that we'll just worry about the touch touchdown uh, function and you can see that this gets triggered based on this um, kind of built-in function for sprite kit uh, just you know the touches began and uh, you can you can detect uh, multiple touches and that's what this uh, kind of compressed uh, for statement is doing right here I prefer to look at my for statements like this it's just kind of kind of a better sense of what's going on so it's saying for T in touches so basically if there was more than one touch on the screen it's going to run this for as many times as you've got that but uh, we really don't need that I mean if, if we're just kind of detecting what you know if we want the player to go up or down, uh, you know, two finger touch isn't really going to help us there, right? Unless we want to kind of make them run double double speed. Uh, so what we'll just do is we'll say uh, for uh, self, and uh, we don't need here. Well, actually, you know what? Let's change that a little bit. How about we just break it after that? So basically, um, after the first touch, we've then canceled out the other ones okay and you could always test this by just you know coming over here and right right and touch right so if we were to run this real quick we should just be seeing touchdown in fact maybe a better example here would have been to just put in here the actual uh the location but here we go all right so touch 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 and even if i all right so i've got four of them down there right now even if i uh hold down the option key which simulates two fingers I'm just seeing one other touch get added over there, right? So that's successfully working. Okay, um, but yeah, let's let's show you guys how to um, print out a variable value inside of here. So you're gonna do your uh, backslash, and then in parentheses, right here, you can now put in, for example, pos.x, right? So that's gonna be the x position, and you know you could do two lines of these if you wanted. Uh, Touched uh, X, and just to be a little bit clear about that. Now using the smaller device, so we can kind of fit everything in here. Okay, so you can see that uh, if I'm over here, the X is at a negative uh, 260, so that means that uh, obviously the 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 Y the X center point is you know somewhere around here, right? So if you touch that again, 29, almost had it, right? Touch the X at, no, there we go, somewhere right about, yeah, actually right about where the character's at. And uh, and I was dead on with the Y, look at that. And uh, obviously the Y, if I go up uh, over here, you can see that the Y is at 587, negative 619. So again, all, all of this is just leading back to our, our, our uh, zero, zero point being dead center in the middle of the screen. And uh, now what we can do is if we want to uh, just do a quick test to see if you touch down kind of at the top or the bottom of the screen, we can just say if uh, the position where we touch down at, uh, if that Y value is greater than zero, that means what? It's got a non-negative value, so it's obviously up, up at the top half of the screen. So you could say, you know, top half touch, right? Else, the bottom half, Oop. bottom half touch. At that point, we could say, let's call a function to move our player down, right? So let's make a function called move down. And 
gonna write over here function move down okay and um, this is kind of just the simplest way to declare a function you know you're basically just um, you know we're not passing anything into this okay so we don't put anything in these parentheses and then we just got to do our opening and closing brackets to it right so anytime you want to call a function this basically is just this part uh, right here and again no parameters parameters being t uh, passed in and by that I mean stuff like this right okay so this code is gonna run uh, anytime we touch down on the bottom half of the screen and here's where we can have some fun with our player so what we can do is we can uh, run an action uh, to move them down and uh, that's actually pretty simple. Uh, we're going to create an, uh, a, a variable called, actually this can be a let, which means that it's not going to change over time. Uh, let, uh, let's just call this move action. It's going to be an SK action, and this is going to equal SK action. And after you type that, um, again, you put a little period over here, you can start to see all these different um, SK actions that you can set up, right? fades, all sorts of different things. And if you want to get inspired, again, you can look over down inside of here. It's going to show you a lot of them as well, or all of them. Uh, but uh, I'm going to put in here move, and you'll see a couple different options. Move by, okay, that's one of them. You could actually move to a specific point, in which case you're going to put in there an, uh, an X and Y location, and all these have a, du a duration for them. Uh, in our case, we want to move by because you know we don't want to send him to the set location every time. We want to move him from where he's at. Somehow it's a guy. Well, I guess it looks like a guy. All right, uh, and and uh, in this case, so we're moving him down. Uh, so we want to uh, add a negative value uh, to the y location, and we'll do this over just uh, one second. Okay, and um, we've created the action now. This could be applied to anything, almost anything in the in the scene. Really, it could be a camera, it could be a label, it could be a, obviously an escape sprite node. Um, so these actions are really flexible. You can reuse them for all sorts of different things. Now, of course, we haven't declared this as a variable, this action over here. We're just using it in this one function. But, um, but you know, you could, you know, declare action, actions over here and give them a value and, again, then reuse them in, in, in multiple different functions. But in our case, it's just isolated to our little move down function right here. And to run this on the player, all we have to do is say the player dot run, and then we put in here move action and uh, that should go away this was just basically a message saying you didn't really do anything with it right that was never used but uh, obviously we're using it now so we don't see that harmless little yellow warning and uh, now when we come over here and we press down or just press on the bottom half of the screen this little guy moves down right and of course if we're up here at the top you know it's not going to do anything when I click down but then I can move him on down that way. And uh, is he walking? Well, not really. I mean, he's still kind of just idling over there. So another thing we could do is um, we could um, we could set up an action in uh, kind of more non-programmably, right? So we could actually go and um, you can see that uh, the starting template came with this actions.sks file and it came with a um, like a, this pulse action inside of here that's set up. And uh, you, can, you can create your own actions and kind of store them for later on. And this one, it's it's scaling and fading in and out, right? So you can actually, um, you can actually add things to this one that they already had in there. Uh, I'm not gonna do that, um, but I just wanna kind of show that you can have you know multiple ones in there. In fact, let's go ahead and just get rid of this guy. So we're gonna delete that out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put in one of our, the one that we saw before, which was, oh, and you know what? Let's make a walk front. There we go. Create. All right. So now I've got an action name for it. So I've named it. And uh, now I can take our animate with textures in here. And I've uh, gone ahead and already imported in uh, some new assets for us, just these, uh, these front walking frames. And same thing I did in the last video. So I've got this selected. I'm going to go over here to my media library and just select all of these frames. All right. So the cool thing about this is we're actually going to um, ultimately combine together a uh, action that we wrote with code and one that we've kind of set up in our actions file over here. All right, so drop these guys in. The duration of one second sounds perfect, right? And I don't want to loop this, okay? So this is just going to run for that one second. So I'm going to come back over here to my uh, oops, sorry, my game scene dot swift file, and we're going to change this around a little bit. So I'm going to say let, and then we'll call this uh, walk animation. This is going to be, again, an SK action. 
And this time around, it's going to be SK action equals SK action. And then just immediately type it, your parentheses and put it in here named. And we're just going to use that same name that we called it in the actions file. So that was a walk front, if I remember right. Yep, walk front. Okay. Uh, and now the only kind of trick that we've got here is we want to, I think this is going to go away on its own in a second. Oh, yeah. Well, it wanted me to kind of ex basically explicitly say that uh, that's it's going to have a value to it, uh, and this would this a code like a line of code like this where you put that exclamation mark afterwards. If it couldn't find that uh, that file, it's going to crash. But hey, you know what? If, if you're setting this up right, it's it's not going to crash because obviously you've got a action named block front. So it's it you know. We can live with that, right? Um, so basically what we want to do is we want to group these together now, okay? And uh, to do that, I'm just giving myself a little breathing room. I'm going to create a another action. So we're going to say let's, and we'll just call this uh, group. This will be SK action. And this is going to equal SK action dot group, okay? Uh, and what it wants from here, and I should show you guys group, all right? What it wants is an array of SK actions, and that's what it's basically telling you right here with these brackets, okay? So the brackets indicate that it, it, it's an array, and the type that it wants is other SK actions, right? So I'm just gonna put in their group, and we're gonna throw in here the two brackets, right? And then walk animation, comma separate them, like you would with any array, and then uh, move action. And an array, an array could just have one value, but obviously that de defeats the point of setting up a group. So as a, as a group, um, these are going to run at the same time. Uh, they're going to each take up as, amount of, uh, as much time as you specified, right? Um, so they're just going to both start at the same time. And the only thing we have to do now is just switch out uh, this to being a group. And let's run it again and see what happens. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to click down, and it might be hard to see on that sort of dark background. Let me zoom in a little bit if I can. Oh, I can't zoom in, can I? Oh, that's the problem with using the smaller device. But uh, yeah, I think you can kind of keep, see that the, his, his legs are moving over there. And then uh, as soon as he's done with the action, he just goes back to the uh, his idle animation before. So think about just how easy that was. We really just have four lines of code. I could have even actually compressed this into watch this i could have actually taken this put that right there but i think for a lot of you it's probably easier to kind of see that as a separate line of code but uh, that would do exactly the same thing uh, as before and to kind of prove that see there he goes he's walking again all right uh, so let me just kind of step backwards on that a little bit and uh and then of course you know you could do a um you know an another action for a to move them back up again. Um, when you think about it, though, the uh, it, you'd probably want to have some sort of buttons or something like this. Uh, you know, making people always jump all the way up up around the screen to kind of set a direction is probably not the the best way to uh, uh, move a character, right? Uh, but uh, for right now, it's uh, certainly easy. And let me switch back over here to the. Um, the actions file, and just to kind of make this totally clear, we could have done even, written even less code, right? Because you could have found your move action inside of here, right? So move action, and then just combine that with the anime textures, and then set you know negative. Why is it not letting me? That is insanely annoying. If it's, I don't know why it's not letting me type into that, but. Uh, it can't be what Apple intends here. <laughs> this is only slidable. Uh, so again, this could be you know your uh, you know how you move it around as well. And again, you can set your duration and all that good stuff. But uh, just to kind of prove that you can combine these together with uh, code and you can write your own actions with code, you know we did it uh, did it this way. And I should point out too that there's uh, there's certain things you can't uh, do as easily uh, with these using the actions file. So for example, I don't think they have weight. Yeah. Um, 
like so you could actually um, make an action that's delayed as well although come to think of it if it's in a group that one doesn't make as much sense but uh, you could put in here uh, let wait equals sk action dot uh, wait for duration so if you want to wait a little bit before you know moving the guy I don't know, a fraction of a second uh, you could do that uh, in which case you would want to uh, set up a, a a sequence and you could do that so let's see well, this will be an interesting little exercise uh, let's put over here uh, let seek for sequence so again this will be sk action equals sk action dot uh, sequence um, oh there I had too many of those that's why i don't think that uh, identified the action let's see let's let's go back one more time yeah, okay, so there's sequence, and again, it's just specifying, hey, what I want is an array, right? So this time around, you could put in here wait, and then uh, throw in your group, okay? So then uh, instead of the group, you're calling your sequence, and it might be hard to see uh, this at, at, you know, point one. So let's do something absurd, and, you know, you press down, and then it makes you wait for two seconds, right? But <laughs> drive people crazy. Worst game ever. <laughs> but... Just to prove it works, I'm going to tap down and then wait a couple seconds, and sure enough, there he goes. He starts walking, right? So, yeah, that would absolutely drive people insane. Uh, but uh, just to prove you can do it, there you go. So let's put in there. <laughs> That's about one frame's worth, so probably nobody would notice there's a one-frame delay. And, you know, there are certain reasons to um, to do things like that. It's a little kind of hard, hard to explain in a in a basic video like this but you know if you wanted some other thing to kind of co uh, complete in the, the uh, kind of the sprite kit cycle or the loop that it's going through sometimes you will uh, delay things um, you know this very short amount of time uh, but yeah there you go it's, it's really hard to yeah, I'm sure you can't the human brain probably can't process that fraction of a second that's being uh, delayed over there and there I go our, our guy's finally left he's off screen so anyway we'll come back with uh, more to do with this little character in the next video I think we can exploit him for some more lessons